easier to do business and have doors open with people you know because they, they kind of want to do that. Make sense? Okay, any other questions before we get started? Because I'm pretty excited about this, what you're going to learn on the brand today. Okay, we'll invite Hughes to offer prayer. Did you think I was going to call on you? Did you have the sense of... Well, the force did tell us something. The force told us something. <laughs> okay, thank you. Our dear Father in heaven, we're grateful the wonderful that has blessed us with the opportunity to be here at school. Father, we pray that our minds will be open to what we're going to discuss today. And we pray that we'll be open with our comments and discussion. And we pray for this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So it's my privilege to get you acquainted with Brent Page. He must be really excited about this because he brought a couple of special people with him. And I'll let you introduce them. I'll bet you have a similar name. Don't you? <laughs> Come on up here, Brent. Okay, so any questions? Brent Page? All right. And if, you, if people come in and they don't have their name, scoot them up here, really. You're up. I'll just push one then. Yeah, push one. Um, are you able to throw on the projector? I don't know how to turn it on. I've got the, the thing on, uh, up on the computer. How neat do you guys get to start a class with a prayer? That is awesome. I kind of forget about that. I, I went to the Y and, and it's been a few years. I kind of forget the neat opportunity that you get to actually start a class with a prayer. That is not often that in your day you get to pray besides meals and morning and night kind of thing. So that is a neat thing. Uh, uh, remember that that's a cool thing to do. Okay. Darn, my formatting must be off. That's all right. It'll work out. Or we are... Does this little clicker work too? Yep, the clicker works. Oh, wow, look at that. And you can go back by a little the back and forward button. <laughs> okay, great. So, um, real fast, so you guys kind of get an idea. Oh, what is this? The mouse too? How do you do this? In order to go back, you have to put previous. Previous. Select. 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 Maybe try the trigger. Trigger. The so one button I didn't try. All right, you guys. Um, I'll go back one more time. So I do this. Back. Select. Okay, once I get this down, we're going to be cruising. Oh, great. Now it's got all these different ones. One more. Select. All right, at least you have my info. Great. Um, so my name is Brant Page, <coughs> but you guys can call me Bubba, because I've been called Bubba ever since my wonderful parents brought me into this world. My parents are in town this week. They're from Phoenix. So this is so neat. i got to have them come. Not very often that i get to have my own family members when I come and speak to different uh, groups. So I've been called Bubba forever. I was a fat baby. I was huge. And honestly, we think that that's where the name came from, and I've always been called that. But when you do the whole business thing, and you become an entrepreneur, and, and you start trying to, to have people trust who you are, I kind of had to start going by my real name for a while. So that's why brands on like my business card or on my website, because if you're calling somebody in New York, and, and you're trying to sell them something for 100 grand, and you tell them your name is Bubba, <laughs> sometimes they don't give you as much credibility as if your name is Brand. I love Brant, I love Bubba, but anyway, feel free to, to, to call me whichever one. Launch Leads is my current company. I wanted to give you guys an idea with this introduction of, of at least what my current company does. So you have some background, and then I'll go through kind of my story. So as you guys talked about the importance of this class, um, uh, hopefully networking is key. You guys are seeing all the names, you're getting to know each other. If you're in this class, I assume you have interest in entrepreneurship either to go work for an entrepreneur or become an entrepreneur or to something with entrepreneurship. So what I'm going to talk about today with my story about becoming an entrepreneur as well as um, some tips and tricks of things to do as an entrepreneur and <coughs> definitely not to do because I've, I've had the chance to learn through hard knocks um, some of those things. So just like you said, you kind of skip the learning curve maybe a little bit because you get to hear these entrepreneurs come and speak. Hopefully I can be a benefit in that way too. So launch leads, uh, B2B. Who's heard of the term B2B? 
Okay, about half. So B2B means business to business. So a business to business um, launch works with companies that do business to business. So meaning they don't sell to you as a consumer. Our clients sell to another business. That's how, how just one differentiation of our, of our company, launch leads. Now what we do for that client is we generate more sales opportunities. So we are a market research firm and we generate market opportunities for our clients. So we actually get in touch with other businesses from all over the country who our client wants to do business with, who they want to talk to. And then we'll set up appointments so that our client, um, let's say SEO.com. Has anybody heard of SEO.com? You drive by their thing every time you go to the point of the mountain. So they've been a client. So SEO.com wants to talk to XYZ company. We tee up that appointment so they can generate a sales opportunity. Does that make sense? Sometimes it's confusing if you're not familiar. Some people call it lead generation. We do a lot of market research. But that's what Launch Leads does, um, to give you an idea. Go to the website. We actually just finished our new website. It's a go, and you can kind of watch a couple of videos to see it in a little more detail. Um, and uh, it was started in 2009, so about three years ago. Uh, we're starting our fourth year this year, which is wild to think we've actually made it this far. Because <laughs> you've heard the, the success rates aren't exactly uh, 100% for entrepreneurs. So we're, we're lucky that we're here so far. Um, started about three years ago in my living room by myself. I had my old school BlackBerry and an Excel spreadsheet. And I just started talking to people. Um, and I'll, I'll be able to share a little bit more of my story, but uh, we're up to almost 40 <coughs> employees now. Um, we're just off of 45th South and 9th West, so it's fairly close to here. And we are hiring. <laughs> so thanks for the plug. Um, and part-time is exactly who we hire. So it's kind of fun that some great students are able to come and be a part um, of our company. But that's a little bit about launch. Um, after, uh, if you guys have any questions, just let me know, and we'll cruise. Okay, my story. Love the graphics. I'm new to the whole like PowerPoint graphics thing. So, uh, probably especially split says. screen. It's split. Yeah, I got double. <laughs> <laughs> double time. This is awesome. Okay, so my very first job. I've got to share this with you because it's so interesting that my very first real job. I was 15, so maybe it wasn't my real real job. It was still, you know, while I was going to school, 15. I worked at an athletic club. I grew up in the Bay Area of California, so right outside of San Francisco. And I worked for the Clinton Valley Athletic Club. Now, what they hired me to do was to, to open a phone book and to start calling down the phone book. Now, it sounds like a very exciting job, you might, you might think, right? So as a 15-year-old, I think I was getting paid 7 bucks an hour. You guys remember? Maybe it wasn't that much. But maybe it was like 6 something. 15-year-old, right? Um, and I was getting paid six or seven bucks an hour to call down a phone book. But here was the kicker. They said for every person you can schedule an appointment with for our closers, our sales team, we'll give you an extra dollar. <laughs> now, for, for somebody like me who would trade my friends as little as like a five or six year old, trade a shiny nickel for their dirty quarter, this was a pretty sweet deal, right? That if I just had to call people and schedule appointments, I got an extra buck. On my hour. Now, I turned out to be one of their top appointment setters in a matter of weeks. I was pounding those phone books like crazy and setting up appointments like nobody's business. I was probably making nine to ten bucks an hour as a 15 year old uh, 15 years ago almost, which was a lot of money for a 15 year old. Um, what's interesting is that's almost what we do at Launch Leads, kind of. I mean, not exactly, but. We set appointments with people, so full circle, first job to now this, it's kind of come around. But that job gave me a really interesting perspective. It gave me an interesting perspective into sales. And I had never really done sales before, uh, but this gave me the very first inkling of what sales is all about. And if you think about it, some people, some of you guys are probably thinking, I hate sales, I never want to do sales ever. Think about when you interview for a job. What are you selling? Yourself. Yourself, right? So guess what? You're already a salesman. When you interview for a job, or when you're when you're gonna get, who, how many of you are married? A couple people are married. There you go. If or if you're dating, who are you selling? <laughs> you are selling yourself. 
I married my wife five years ago, and it was a business transaction. <laughs> I'm telling you, so we met, and I, we knew each other for about a year. We were dating, and kind of not really dating, and we're friends, and she didn't really like me, but I liked her. And we did the whole thing. The whole time, I was selling myself to get her to become my wife at some point, right? I didn't know that in the beginning, but near the end, I figured that that was the key. And I, luckily, I closed the deal because we got married. I married the, the Tiffany Oaks Temple, and now we have two kids, a two-year-old and a six-month-old, and they are the cutest things ever. I should have brought a picture. Sure. No, that would be great. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll insert that next time. I totally forgot about that. Um, anyway, so just to give you an idea, you're always selling. You might not consider yourself a salesman, but you are selling yourself every day. You're selling yourself to your professor, making sure that you're doing a good job and getting an A, to your date, to your wife. So anyway, always remember you are a salesman, even if you don't think you are. Okay? Um, my very first company started in college at BYU. I got lucky. Um, I had st- done the sales thing when I was 15, and I just kept doing sales. And I was doing sales, and basically every job I did, it was sales and sales and sales. I sold quite a bit of Cutco, if you guys have heard of that stuff, when I was 16, 17. Um, rocked it. I mean, just killed it. Selling a lot of knives. My wife is the one to thank, because now we have a full set of these awesome knives. If you haven't heard of Cutco, it's kind of fun. Uh, but anyway, I just sold all kinds of stuff. I love sales. So my very uh, first company, I wasn't the original founder. I was a co-founder. There were six partners. But I was over all the sales because somebody had heard that I was some crazy sales guy and they wanted me to run their sales. So we did an importing company and we imported furniture um, from Taiwan. Set up a distribution system so we had, I traveled the country doing trade shows and uh, hired 40 manufacturers reps. Um, and the company was called Seatability. It was chairs, office chairs. Funky, crazy idea. Um, and my partners and I competed in the BYU competitions. We took fourth and third place. Uh, in the Entrepreneur of the Year Awards, and then in the top 10 for the Utah Entrepreneurial Challenge, which was just awesome. That's where the fire of entrepreneurship began to burn within me, was that company. Um, And I didn't even come up with the idea. I just joined the team and and was a part owner. Now, a couple years later, I got lucky enough to actually sell. Oh, and I have to mention, my parents actually invested in that company. Can you believe? They They gave me five grand to put into that company. They were so gutsy. I'm sure they knew that was down the drain. (laughs) But two years later, I sold my ownership to my partners and they actually got paid back with some interest. Like he said, he's always selling. (laughs) (laughs) So it's not always a bad thing, right? You you get some help. But uh, so I sold my ownership. That was my first mini success. Obviously, I got a little bit of cash, not a ton, but a little bit of cash and then a whole bunch of chairs. Because in my buyout, even all my family members got chairs. That was one of the deals. Um, and uh, by, I, that's when I started to, to learn about business mentors. And I was at BYU at the time, and uh, I was able to get amazing professors and mentors like Wynn Dunford. You guys don't understand who you guys have teaching this class. Wynn is amazing. So hopefully you guys give him some credit and some respect the guy. Because if you want to learn about entrepreneurship, he's your man. But business mentors is really how I've gotten to where I am today. I, there's no way I could have learned myself. Mentors helped me to get there. Anyway, hopefully that's just a preface. And because we're in an LDS school, I can actually say this. God wants you to succeed. He wants you to be successful. You can do so much in life. And success, the term success can mean very many things. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't have to mean money, just so you know. God wants you to be successful in all areas of your life. <coughs> Remember that. Pray for that help to become successful and whatever success means to you because God wants you to get that. It's kind of fun I get to add that in, in this kind of a presentation. I don't get to do that all the time. Okay. Now I'm going to have to cruise because we only have to the, to the top of the hour. Five o'clock. Five o'clock, okay. Let's fly. If you do have questions, feel free to raise your hand. Um, uh, but we're going to cruise. If you're confused by something I say, just let me know. Um, but we're going to get things going. I've got to teach you, if you don't know this already, take advantage as a student. You guys, oh my gosh, so many companies are out there that are consultants. Consultants make a lot of money per hour. They have a weird lifestyle because you never know when the money's going to come in. But consultants make a lot. And guess what? As a student, 
most of the time you don't have to pay for consultants. Because you have cool guys like Lynn Dunford or like myself or other people who will come and speak who will give you free advice. We'll give you free consulting because we just like to. We just want to give you, we just want to help out. As a student, you guys need to go, uh, th- actually, take, take advantage of students. Let me go and throw some of these in. Um, one thing I kind of messed up in my education and I, I regret is I didn't take advantage of actually learning. Getting a ton out of my, I got a, communi- a degree in communications, and I just wanted to finish. I just wanted to get done. I just wanted to have a degree, so I knew I had a degree. I wish I would have spent more time with my professors, really studying the material, because you will use it. I know all the time, you're like, what am I going to use? The calculus is stupid. You're going to use it at some point, and it's better that you take advantage. Um, if you are going to be an entrepreneur, how many of you guys want to be an entrepreneur someday? All right. Compete. Compete as a student. Do you guys have any business competitions here at LDSBC? Yeah. There's one coming up soon, actually. <laughs> Do you want to, if, if there is one coming up, compete in it. If there's not one at the LDSBC, do one in the state of Utah. Google Utah business competitions. Find every single competition you can get into. Most of them you don't have to pay money to get into. They're free. They want you to apply. They want to give money away. They want to give free consulting away. They want to give free services away. This is amazing. When we did the, the Entrepreneur of the Year... Oh, yes. Brent, there's one going on at the University of Utah now for $40,000 and one at BYU for $37,000 right now. Unreal. None of these guys want the money, but I'll just pay about it. That's right. <laughs> That's right. No deal. You guys, the experience, not only the money, right? Because we didn't even win. We took fourth and third place. So we got like small prizes. But the publicity and the experience and the preparation you had to go through to actually do the competition was so worth it. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. And then the networking of the other businesses that were being a part of and the judges. So I now have on my advisory board one of the judges from that competition at BYU way back in the day is now an advisor to my current company because we've kept in contact and he's helping to do these relationships. Compete. Please do it. It's a huge thing to do. And obviously, it's okay to fail. That's, it's okay. That's what entrepreneurs do. Um, and then you just got to remember, use the free resources, you guys. Oh, my gosh. People pay so much money. Lotus Notes. Um, what is it? Uh, what are these paid? I don't even use them because uh, I use so many free resources. There's all these types of things you have to pay now if you're not a student to get, gain access to libraries, which is so dumb. All these online things that people are trying to get you to pay monthly membership. Use your libraries, use your professors, gain mentors, and there are free tools in the colleges. I won't spend too much time, uh, but research it and figure it out. It's worth the time and effort that you guys take to do it, okay? Research, use free tools. Being a young entrepreneur, uh, looking at the crowd, it looks like everybody's under 40, or at least in that range, okay? Being a young entrepreneur is very unique. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> Long you, you guys, young, yeah, young. Yeah. Being a young entrepreneur has its benefits. Like I said, guys like myself or Wynn or whoever, we want to help you out. We know that, that you, or I can even say we, because I'm totally, I'm 28. How many of you guys are, are around the 28 range? All right. So I'm close, right? So I, a similar age range with you guys. We get help because people just want us to succeed. They want to see the next generation coming up be awesome. So they just want to help you for free, okay? Um, and the other thing is, you guys pull all-nighters. I mean, we, we are able to work late in the night. We're able to work really hard because we just have more energy than somebody who's 50. It's just the way it is. We, can, we have a lot more energy, and we're willing to do stupid things like not sleep for a few days. But we do it, and we're willing to do it, okay? Um, a lot of times, you have crazy ideas, and some of the ideas about innovative ideas is you don't know where the boundaries are. The older we get, the more boxes we feel like we have to go into, more policies we feel like are in place. As young entrepreneurs, your brain is so wide open, you don't know what can't happen. Who in the heck thought Twitter was going to go as big as Twitter did or Facebook? It's ridiculous. Only somebody like Mark Zuckerberg would come up with Facebook. Because what 50-year-old in their right mind would think anybody would want to connect with anybody online? That's just stupid, right? They're going to go and IPO it. 300 billion or something like that, ridiculous, okay? 
So a lot of young minds, why investors like young people is because they think you've got the next, next great idea. Investors have a slight, not all, but there are studies done that they will invest in a younger demographic between 20s and 30s than they will in the 50s and up. Because in certain, obviously in certain uh, industries, but because they think you have the next best idea. Okay? Just think about that. And a lot of times, when I was at BYU or going to school, I didn't have a mortgage, I didn't have any kids, I, didn't, I wasn't even married, so I didn't have a full-time job. Um, I was just doing it. And although some of you guys might be married, you might have a mortgage, you might have some of these things, you probably don't have as many as a 30, 40, 50 year old. So, hopefully give you an idea. Okay, let's cruise. So we're gonna go over four key principles. Definitely write these down. Four key principles uh, that we're gonna walk through today. Uh, these will help you to succeed better and faster than if you didn't have these principles. And the only reason I can say that with such conviction is because I received these four principles and have applied them to my own life and my own business. And I've watched it succeed faster and better than my friends who didn't have this. Okay? Key principle number one. Who can read this for me? Volunteer. Who? First hand. Successful entrepreneurs are decisive and action-oriented, even if they have incomplete information. Okay. The last two words. Incomplete information. This is very unique. Now, a 28-year-old, I'm not going to spend the time to research, research and read all these kind of papers and do all this stuff to make one decision. I'm just going to do it. And if I fail, I'm going to say, crap, I failed and I'm going to try something else. I'm just willing to do that. Successful entrepreneurs don't have to have all the information. It's so sad when I talk to somebody and they say, I've been working on this idea. It's three years in the making and I'm go going to launch next year. Why did they waste four years of their life doing research. Unless you're like developing a drug or something in like pharmaceuticals or medical device where you like have to do FDA testing, just go out and do it. Let's look at this. Action actually exceeds planning. It exceeds your thinking and discussing. It even exceeds your research. Just go and do. Action is the key word here. Action is the key. You've got to act. I know every single one of you guys in here has some idea. If you want to be an entrepreneur, it's because you've either had an idea, you've got an idea, or you're go going to have an idea that you want to do. If you have that idea and you don't act on it, it will never happen. At least you will make it happen. But I bet there was another hundred people out there, like Mark Zuckerberg, who had the exact idea. Well, guess what? His friends that he ripped it off of and got sued by, they had the idea, right? Uh, you guys, did you ever watch this, the show? Who watched the movie? If you haven't, go watch it. It is so inspiring. It's kind of crazy, but it's really inspiring. I, I probably shouldn't like. It's probably PG thirteen. I probably shouldn't say like go watch a PG thirteen movie. <laughs> but it was the book is R rated. The book is yeah, <laughs> but it's awesome. Okay. The thing is, a lot of people have create really cool ideas, and guess what? People, a lot of people have my idea of launch leads. There are other people doing my exact idea today. But guess what? My company is getting up there with some of the top dogs in my industry because we are executing. We are actually acting on those ideas. If you have an idea and you don't act, it's not going to happen. Okay? You guys understand that, right? We can skip, move forward. Action. Number one. Key principle number two. I'm a salesman, right? Who in here is a salesman? Raise your hand. Everybody raise your hand. You're all salesmen. Raise your hand. There we go. Everybody, remember, you are all salesmen or saleswomen. You sell every day of your life. Okay? Remember that. Even if you're not a salesman with a company, you sell yourself every day. <coughs> salesmen are not evil. Okay? Just a heads up. You have to be able to sell. So, I was taught... These, these are things that I was either taught or learned, learned through hard effort. Client revenue solves a lot of problems when you're running a business. <laughs> Client revenue means money. Money solves a lot of problems, but not just any kind of money, not a loan, <coughs> not debt, not investment necessarily, but client money. And the reason I say client, ooh, I've got a laser. Woohoo! <laughs> client money 
Because that means you have somebody paying you for your <coughs> product or service. Why that's so important is because that validates what you're doing. If somebody's willing to write a check or charge a credit card because of your product or service, that means that it's worth something. Another sad thing I see all the time is that the guy who spends three, four years launching a business, and then once he finally does launch a business, guess what happens? Nobody buys it. Because it's just, nobody cared. He didn't sell it first. Let's keep going. Okay, so in order to sell the product or service first, before you even create it, so you don't spend the three years or six months or even a few months, if you've got a concept of an idea, figure out who your target is, who you're supposed to sell it to, and go talk to somebody. Go talk to somebody that would have been, who would have bought it, right? If you want to sell to athletic teams, call up the Utah Jazz. And just pick up the phone, co-call into them, and say, hey, Utah Jazz, I'm a student at the LSBC, and I've got a business idea that I think you guys would benefit from. And ask them, say, I'm selling this. Just explain your deal, and guess what? They're going to tell you, it's a good idea, or I wouldn't ever pay for that, that's horrible. You just got validation, whether it's a bad idea or a good idea. You might want to test that out a few times, like 100. <coughs> Call 100 people and try and sell it. And if you can't sell it to those first 100 people, don't do that business. Don't. Stop right there. Don't spend any more money on it. Don't spend any more time on it. Don't do the business. Oh, it's so frustrating. When I get somebody to come to me and say, Brand, I just love how you're an entrepreneur and you're succeeding. It's great. I want to be like that. And I've been doing this thing and I've been selling it for three years. And I just i am having a hard time getting traction. And I have to look at that person and say, guess what? Scrap the business. Go do something else. Your time and effort can be done can be used so much better if you do something that people actually want to pay for. Does that make sense? You buy stuff all the time. You only buy stuff you want. You're not going to buy something you don't want. Anyway, sell it first. Concept does that concept make make sense? After you sell it, then go design it. And after you design it, then go build it. If it's a product type business, same thing with a service business. Sell the idea, the concept first. Then design, then build it. Sell, design, build. Concept number two. Sell, design, build. If I was going to quiz you, I would ask, what are the three words? Sell, design, build. Okay? In that exact order. Never flip-flop. Sell, design, build. Very important. Alan Hall, if you guys have heard of Market Star, he's the one who taught me that. Market Star is like 3,000 employees. He sold for a few hundred million dollars. Amazing story. Anyway. Still design good. <coughs> Booyah. Let's go. Ready to move? Move, move, move. Okay. Key principle number three. <coughs> okay. <coughs> okay. We need a volunteer. Who can read? First hand. Don't neglect powerful opportunities simply because they don't seem unique. You're much more likely to find success by building on established ideas, models, and technology. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. This is something that's interesting because <clears throat> as entrepreneurs, at least for me, when I kind of learned the term entrepreneurship, now, a little background, <coughs> my dad's a podiatrist. He's a foot doctor. He is now running the eighth podiatry school in the country. He started the eighth podiatry school in the country, which is awesome. And uh, his brothers and sisters uh, were, are all professionals in their own right. And all of my siblings, I have three brothers and sisters, uh, two brothers and one sister, and now a brother-in-law. Uh, doctor, uh, uh, ENT, doctor, a lawyer, and a dentist. I have a whole bunch of professionals in my group. I don't have a single entrepreneur. No entrepreneurs in my background. Even my grandparents, nobody was an entrepreneur. So I didn't even know what the word entrepreneurship meant until I got to college. So I didn't have like some some like super awesome grandpa who was, you know, funding me with all of his his entrepreneurial ideas and growing up with these just, you know, born to be an entrepreneur. I didn't have that. I'm assuming a lot of you don't have that. And guess what? It's okay, and you can succeed without that as an entrepreneur. It depends on you. Now the concept is: Do you have to have a Super unique idea. Now, we all have heard of Twitter, and we've all have heard of Facebook, and we've all heard of Amazon.com, and some of these things that are super unique 
and really creative ideas. Fusion IO is one of the, the local ones that just went public. School candy, super unique <coughs> idea. No, not their product, everybody's got headphones, but their concept, their brand was unique. Um, not everybody has to come up with a unique, unique idea to be a successful entrepreneur. My company is not that unique. We do market research and lead generation. There are a lot of people doing that exact same thing. But I was able to build off of a successful or an established idea <laughs> and narrow my focus, kind of create a niche market. So as you guys think about your ideas, don't necessarily think that I have to come up with the next Twitter. Because sometimes that will stifle your growth as a human being. If you look at Twitter and think, oh my gosh, I, I have to build the next Twitter. Not that I'm, I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying you don't have to. You can come up with uh, um, uh, basically the execution as a key instead of the uniqueness. So I love this type of a competing look, look at it. Um, I don't want to downplay. Don't take me the wrong way. I don't want to downplay that unique ideas are bad. That is not the case. But what I did a presentation like this to a group of, of uh, potential entrepreneurs. Um, a guy came to me and handed me his business card and he said, Hey, Brent, I've got this amazing idea. It is the most unique thing that nobody else is doing. I said, Wow, that's amazing. What do you got going on? His business card had a picture of a, a red sports car. And I thought, Well, that's kind of a cool sports car, but uh, what's the unique idea? He said, Flip over the card. And this, that same red sports car had wings on it. And it was a flying car. <laughs> I looked at the guy with a little smile. I said, I thought it was kind of a joke. Right? I thought he was kind of a joke. And he said, Brent, I have been working on this idea for 10 years. I have come up with the specs. I've come up with this and the that. I've talked to hundreds of, entre of entrepreneurs about it. They all tell me it's an amazing idea. He says, but I'm having a hard time getting funding. And I had to face the guy, and, and I'm, I'm really a nice guy. I really am a nice guy. Hopefully my parents can vouch, Wynn can vouch. I'm a nice guy. I had to be honest with this guy. I had to look at him and say, you know what? You spent this much time on it, and you haven't sold or built anything on it? It's time to move on. Flying cars will probably happen at some point. But it... it Don't we call them airplanes? Don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just felt bad for the guy, right? The idea was uber unique, but he hadn't ex executed on it. He hasn't raised the, raised the money because nobody wanted to invest in it. Maybe it wasn't the idea. Maybe it was the handle. I don't know. But execution is so much more important than your, your unique idea. How many SEO... Have you guys heard of SEO? Search engine optimization. Okay, that's kind of a unique term. Um, Google. Everybody wants to get to the top of Google. When you like search something, there are all these results. And the top ten are the ones that everybody clicks on. So everybody wants to be in the top 10 because you're going to buy their stuff rather than the guy who's like on page 10, most likely. So search engine optimization is companies that help you get to the top of Google. Probably something to know. It's a good business term to know if you didn't know before. What was it again? SEO, search engine optimization. Because Google is a search engine. And they're optimizing your, your business, your website for search engines. So search engine optimization. Okay, Probably a good term. Probably should know that. Um, because when you do your own business, you're going to want to use search engine optimization to get to the top of Google. <clears throat> but in Utah alone, there are hundreds of SEO companies. Hundreds. They all have the same idea. But there are only a few who have executed well enough to make it a viable business. So everybody can have the same idea, but if you execute better, you're going to win. Another thing is, we'll get to the, at the end of the slideshow, the things not to do. If, if you come to me with an idea, and you say, I don't want to tell you anything about it, because if I tell you, then you're going to steal the idea and do it better. If I can steal the idea and do it better, then you shouldn't run that business. <laughs> you should be the expert. You should be able to execute better than I can. Because if you get in the real world, and you start a company, and you can't execute better than the next guy, they're going to win. Execution is key. Okay? Execution. Uh, don't waste time. Let's go to the next one. Good. Okay. This is something I love. If you're a first-time entrepreneur, just do something super simple. Do something simple that you know will make you money. You know that will get you the best bang for your time and effort. 
That doesn't necessarily mean start a lawn, lawn mowing business because you know that you can mow lawns. Um, look at your opportunity. If you spend five years with that business, where is it going to get you in the end? <coughs> How big is your market? If you want to open an ice cream shop on the corner, there's nothing wrong with that. But just realize that your market is probably just that two-mile radius. And you probably can't grow much larger than that two-mile <coughs> radius unless you franchise. Okay? So just think about that when you're thinking of a business idea, that you can start with something simple, but realize the time you spend will give you as much return as basically how well your company can work in that market. Maybe that's, that's a whole other lecture. Invite me back. I will do a whole other thing on how to determine what type of business to start. Because that is a whole new world. But anyway, start with something simple. That's the best way to put it. <laughs> and, uh, and I always say, use hustle as a strategy. Be a hustler. Don't be dishonest and, and do bad things to people. But hustle. Be an athlete in entrepreneurship. Okay? Just work your tail off. And work hard. Because hustling will get you ahead of the next guy. Because most people don't hustle. If you think about it, most people will come up with an idea, they'll go maybe raise money by an investor, and then they'll sit back and they'll try and let things happen. But you as a scrappy entrepreneur can make things happen faster, better, just because you're hustling. Okay? Let's move on. 90. Just two. Number four. Um, is it okay if we have, if I... I'll try to cut some things down to have Q and A after. Okay, go for it. Do you guys want Q and A after? Sure. Yeah. Want okay. Okay. Time. Let's go. Person number four. <coughs> Quote. New person. Developing and maintaining your network will be among the most valuable long-term investments you make. Okay. <laughs> you guys talked about this. You guys already know this before. You guys talked about being able to network in this class alone. Oh my gosh! Can I tell you that this is true? Networking has been one of the most important things I have ever done in my entire life. Networking. Not MLM networking. Not network marketing. Networking. <coughs> Becoming friends with other people. That's it. All you have to do is be friends. You don't even have to come with an ulterior motive. It's actually better if you don't go with an ulterior motive. Okay? <coughs> networking. Just be open to be friends. You're sitting next to somebody today. At the end of the class, turn to that person and introduce yourself. Guess what? It may not come and turn into anything. But if you become friends with them, you never know. They might be your next employee. They could be your next partner. They could be your next investor. I probably wrote that down. There it is. Um, they can really become your potential something in the future. Now, you don't necessarily want to judge, prejudge. That's not cool. Don't prejudge and say, well, I don't want to be friends with you because you're not going to have that rich uncle that's going to invest in my company. <laughs> you don't know that. You don't know anything about somebody until you get to know them. So network. So I started this in my living room. Didn't have anything going for me other than I was going to hustle the heck out of this thing. And I knew that I could sell because I had practiced a lot. But one thing that I did that I will never regret, uh, maybe six months into it, I had about uh, six months into it, I probably had five employees, all in my living room. Wild idea. My wife kicked us out of five employees. She wouldn't let us stay. Tell us about it. But uh, five employees, I ended up joining a group called the Utah Technology Council. Something you can think about. Utah Technology Council. There are other networking groups you guys might have heard of, um, but that was the very first one I joined. Utah Technology Council. It was specific to my industry because we worked with tech companies. And it was Utah. And it was kind of a forum to learn, to network, and to grow. That was kind of my thing. And I thought, you know what? The 500 bucks I had to pay to do that a year, 500 bucks to a startup entrepreneur is wildly expensive. I mean, that is so many top Robins you can't even imagine. <laughs> right? 500 bucks is a lot of dough. But I really weighed my odds and I was like, you know what? I'm in my living room. I don't really... I don't really get to know other people who I'm just cold calling I'm calling all over the country. So, so I need something here in Utah. Um, and luckily, I had a little bit of network to go off of from my BYU experience and my first company. But I thought I'm going to do it. I'm going to fork out the dough and spend the 500 bucks because I'm going to I'm just going to tear it up. And I went to my first meeting. It was a group maybe about half this size of all business people. 
And I was totally, I didn't have a clue what I was doing there, right? But I knew I wanted to make friends with other business people. That was pretty much my concept. Um, the, at the end of that year, so 2009, I had networked with almost 80% of the entire organization. And they have a couple thousand members. I had gone to every single meeting that they had and learned all kinds of things about HR and about marketing because they had all these different meetings about the sales and technical and all these different things. I networked with so many people in that room that by the end of that year, I was able to receive an award by those guys. And this is what was so cool. I didn't know that they even had this award. But because I had networked with so many people, I had gained new clients. I had gained employees from people I had gotten to know. I had grown my company a couple hundred percent, which for starting was not that much, but it still was a lot. They named me the Emerging Executive of the Year, which was awesome. That was such a cool award to get as this young guy who just started a company. Emerging Executive of the Year. And guess what? Since then, my company's grown 200% year after year. And I keep going back to that same group because they've been a huge resource, okay? So just remember, don't prejudge. When you're talking to somebody, don't judge and say, oh, I'm not going to ever get anything out of that person. You don't know who they know. You don't know who their dad or their sister or who their uh, cousin or neighbor is. You just don't know. So get to them, know them as a person and as a friend without those ulterior motives because at some point, if you're a good person and you treat people well, they will treat you well back. Good karma. Okay, let's move on. Move on, move on, move on. Let's go. Things not to do. Let's cruise. We kind of touched upon this so I can skip. Don't hide your idea. That's stupid. Talk to people about your idea. If your idea is so great and you can't tell people about it because it's so top secret and somebody's going to steal it, then you're not the right person for it. I'm so sorry to say that. That's harsh. That's harsh. Tell people about your idea because guess what? The more you talk about it, the more they might know somebody. Say, oh, this person knows that about that industry. You should talk to them. Or this person was really looking into that and they might be an investor or whatever. Don't keep it. If you build it, they will come. That is so false. It only happens in uh, movies. What was the movie? Builder Dreams. Builder Dreams. It only happens in that movie and nowhere else. You can't build it and they will come. Maybe 1% of the top 99.99% of something. Maybe. Don't use that as a reference, though. They will not come if you just build it. You've got to get yourself out there. Um, this is something that I learned. Uh, my very first business, I had six partners. We were all equity owners. Do you guys equity? Equity is ownership. Yeah? Okay. Equity is ownership. Um, we basically gave away equity to whoever could bring in some money, right? So I was lucky enough to have parents who were willing to sacrifice, and they gave me 5K. And that bought me my ownership, right? Um, and, uh, and, and my sweat equity that I worked there. But what I find a lot of times is you're sitting in a classroom like this, you turn to the guy next to you, you're, you're networking, you're becoming friends, all of a sudden you have this great idea, you share it with the guy or the gal, and they say, oh, let's partner. That's a great idea, let's partner. And then all of a sudden you have like three partners or four partners, and you all have like 25% ownership in the company, and oh my gosh, that was your idea. You just gave away three-fourths of your company just because you sat around a table and talked about it. That's not a good way to go. <laughs> that equity in your business could be worth millions and millions of dollars or something. Okay? There's nothing wrong with partnering with people. I don't want to give that impression. But you don't just have to give away equity. Okay? Don't just give away ownership. You can make things work. I am the only partner in this business. That's wild. I had six of my first. I had my second business we didn't even go over, but there were four of us. And after that one, I said, you know what? I think I can do this on my own. So I did. And guess what? I still don't have any partners, and I own 100 percent of Wild thought. But when I do sell it, and let's say it's 10 million bucks, just round number, right? That 10 million is going to my bank account, not split five different ways. It's just something to to think about when you're getting that idea together and you're thinking about partners and things. It's okay to have partners. Don't get me wrong. But just be careful. You don't have to give it away. That's a whole other lecture we can do for another three hours about what to do there. Concept? Understood? And don't quit school. <laughs> when didn't pay me to put that up there? Don't quit school. I actually have a bachelor's degree. 
It took me two extra years to finish. I left BYU. I got married, left BYU, and I joined this company, this other, not another company. And I just, I just kind of got, got things going, and I kind of forgot that I had one class left. One class. It took me two years to finish that one class. Don't do that. Because it is so hard. So hard to finish when you're already in your life and world and marriage and kids and your business and all this stuff. Oh my gosh, just don't quit. Just get it done. You need to have that agreement. <coughs> just get it agreed. It's so important. And you can do business. I was just, if you know the Utah Business Magazine, anybody know Utah Business Magazine? This month's issue, I got quoted in it. Kind of fun. So look for it and look for my quote. And it's all about college entrepreneurs. Should they or should they not? And there are three of us that they quoted. One person said, quit and go start college, just start your business and quit. The other person said, only focus on college and don't do anything else but college. And mine was obviously the, the, the split. Because I was able to be a student and run a business at the same time, and it was fantastic. Some of the best things I could have done was in that perspective. So you can do it as a student. Don't quit. Finish school. Okay. This is something where I think is unique. Um, I'm here because I want to give back. It's, uh, it's fun for me to do this because I know how it feels. I've been in your seat. I didn't have a clue what the heck I was doing before I got involved in my first, and even then I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I don't even have a clue what I'm doing now. But at least I can pretend like I know what I'm doing. You know. But I feel like the mentors that I gained through college, through my businesses, through networking, that was, that was honestly just the key. Key to having people that I could talk to and say, geez, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, you've been there before, I haven't, what would you do in this scenario? And they would give me their honest feedback. And they weren't investors, and they didn't own anything in my business, they were just mentors. Absolutely important. So, being a mentor to others, it's just key. So I'm happy to help, right? I can't commit hours and hours, but I'm happy to help. Okay? Uh, so be a mentor. Uh, <coughs> Donate your time. This is important to start even before you are a, uh, an entrepreneur or before you run your own business. But remember to, that when you are an entrepreneur and you are running a successful business, to give back by donating your time. So I'm on the board of, uh, well, my dad has a nonprofit, Step by Step Foundation. So I'm on the board of, of a nonprofit here. Um, I'm also on the board of, of something called the Community Foundation of Utah, uh, which is a collaboration of, of uh, a lot of nonprofits together. I help them as a mentor. Um, there's something called the Provo or the Technology Technology Accelerator Program down in Utah County. I'm uh, on the board and a mentor for that group as well. Um, I really believe that giving back will help you as well. There's just so many things about giving back. You network a lot of times with you too. But you just feel good. And you guys are all here. You're in the right place. LDSBC. You know this this concept. Don't get your talents. Don't get money. And then, again, I can put this in here. Build your church. God gave us quite a few commandments. But in the scriptures, he refers to one thing that as an entrepreneur I think of most. That was probably a horrible way to come up with a question. I shouldn't ask you that question because now you feel all under the gun. He wants us to build something. What does he want us to build? His kingdom. His kingdom. Who said that? Thank you. Appreciate that. Stacy. There you go. He wants us to build his kingdom. If you can remember, and there's a scripture. Does anybody know where it's from? Where it says, putting the kingdom first? Twelve. Look at this. And can anybody quote it? Because I can't. I'm so sorry. Did anybody hear that? Everybody heard it? That was awesome. Yeah. Thank you. That is so true. I, I just remember, now I am not some uber successful entrepreneur. Not yet. I am not there yet. I'm still a young, scrappy guy who's making it work. Okay. Luckily things are, are, are functioning and they're working quite well. But I don't have some humongous exit behind me with millions and millions of dollars in my pocket. I'm not that guy yet. Okay. But I know, like we had in the very first slide, God wants you to be successful. He wants you to succeed. And one of the main reasons why he wants you to succeed in life, and not just monetarily, is because he wants you to build the kingdom. Building the kingdom 
is what's most important here. And if you can remember that concept and not just think, I'm going to make millions of dollars and be a super wealthy person on the beaches of the Caribbean, he will help you even more. And I promise if you give back, I promise if you give back to the community, to your church, to others who need you, he will bless you even more. And being able to build the kingdom is going to bless you in more ways than you could ever imagine. Because remember, what something moths and something corrupt, whatever that is, I don't know the scripture all the way, <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about? We don't take stuff with us after this life, right? I'm not a scriptorian. But hopefully I've gotten some of the principles down, right? So, okay, make sense? I think that's it. Here's my contact info. Feel free to write it down. Um, connect with me on LinkedIn. Happy. To, if you're not on LinkedIn, get on LinkedIn ASAP tonight. Make that a homework. Assignment. LinkedIn profile. I like that. I'm giving you guys homework assignments. Well, LinkedIn. Get on. So important. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you have gotta be on LinkedIn. Anyway. If you're on Twitter, feel free to follow. Uh, LinkedIn. Happy to be there. Check out the site. Look at my site. You'll be able to kind of see the history of where we've come from. Uh, but anyway, happy to connect. There's my email address. Please be patient with me if I can't respond in like the first few hours or even the first week or two. I get a few hundred emails a day. I will get back to them. And don't be offended if it's a short answer. <laughs> I like to promise that because I've had some expectations built before that weren't necessarily the best. Okay, uh, I know we only have a couple minutes for QA. I'm so sorry that took longer. As you can tell, I'm passionate about this. So uh, feel free, raise your hands, and uh, hit me. Um, you talked about starting with <coughs> all doing something simple when you're being going. Um, but I feel like a lot of, especially nowadays with things changing so much, a lot of ideas, even if they're pretty big, are really time and time sensitive. Like they have to happen like right now, or where that trend's going to pass, or somebody else is going to do it. What would you say is more important, like finishing school and let, like waiting for another opportunity later, or like giving 100% to an opportunity that could grab hold right now? Absolutely. Great question. And that's a loaded question. Because obviously there are different circumstances for different things, right? Um, a, few, a few people have done very well dropping out of school. That is absolutely no questions asked. There have been some great success stories from people dropping out of school. The majority of them do not succeed. That's just... So just remember, if you have a phenomenal idea right now, I can challenge you that you can be a student, even if it's part-time student. You can be a student and run that company at the same time. I promise. I did it. You can do it. I think it's so important to have that degree under your belt because you just, as an entrepreneur, my business could fail tomorrow and everything is out the window. I don't have some huge savings sitting there, so I would need to go get a job. And if I didn't have a degree... That would be tough, okay? Remember, degree, even if you think you're going to be an entrepreneur forever, your whole life, a degree will always be a great background. I still think you can actually go out and do it. So if you have a time-sensitive idea, one, you want to make sure that it's not too time-sensitive because if it's only hitting a wave, and that wave will take your company like this and then like that, you want to be careful, right? You want to build a sustainable business that can last because if it's on a trend that's only going to last a year or two, that might not be the best business idea. You want to build something typically that's going to last. It's okay if you sell it, but somebody's not going to buy it if the trend's over. Make sense? Of course. But great, great question. Great question. Let's go. Oh, you guys, come on. I'm not that scary, right? Entrepreneurship. Start. Another. Yeah. Hey, you got um, your hands up. I have a, I have a friend whose dad has been an entrepreneur his whole life, or an entrepreneur his whole life, and recently he sold, or he, I guess, got the rights from NASCAR to start NASCAR car washes, um, to use NASCAR's name to do car washes, and NASCAR said that they've had hundreds of people come to him and say, hey, we want to make a car wash using your name, and they just really liked him. Um, and I haven't given, I haven't had the chance to talk to him much about that, but is there a lot of opportunity in, in kind of 
using a name like that or like finding a company where you can use their name to get into a market so you don't really have to start from the ground? Is there a lot of potential in, in that way of starting a business? Absolutely. Absolutely there is. And, and here's a key concept that maybe I can help to teach. <coughs> there are two different types of businesses. There's a lifestyle business and there's a growth style business. So this is key to remember. Um, <coughs> lifestyle businesses, there, and there's nothing wrong. Both businesses are equally as cool. Okay? <coughs> lifestyle business is uh, a car wash business, let's say. Or let's say it's a restaurant business. Or it's your consulting firm. Or an accounting firm. Or something like that. Like lifestyle is where... I say that again? A service business? A service business, yeah. Some types of service business would be that. Carpet cleaning. A lot more. And a lifestyle business is where you as the owner can build a business that makes good money. Half a million bucks, maybe even a million bucks a year. And you're able to take home a fat salary and live off some good profits and bonuses and buy a boat and a nice house and take care of your kids for the rest of your life. Because that thing year over year is just going to pump out some cash. Lifestyle business. There is nothing wrong with that. It is a beautiful business. There's a growth style business. Growth style business is usually where you don't stop at a million bucks or half a million bucks or whatever that, that play, plateau is. Growth style is you grow and you grow and you don't ever stop growing. And you just grow, grow, grow. Typically, you take investment. Because people will only invest... No, okay, I, I shouldn't blanket the statements like that. Most investors are looking for a return on investment. Most venture capitalists want 10x return, 10 times. If they give you a dollar, they want 10 back. And they want it in about five years. So a growth style business better grow 10 times, or else investors won't invest in you. So lifestyle business, where you can live a life that is just awesome with your family... You and your family, and it's beautiful. Growth style business, it has more risk. With more risk comes more reward. Sometimes those companies can sell for millions and millions and millions of dollars. So there's two different businesses. So why I, I, I brought that to the table is that as you're determining your business idea um, and like uh, using somebody's name, you're going to be paying royalties to that person. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You just have to plug that into your, your business you know, plan and how you're going to actually make that work. But franchises are a great idea. If you, as your very first business, want to do a franchise, they've already got it figured out, right? That's why they're doing franchise. So you can do a franchise and maybe not take as much risk as you can. Um, most franchises are a lifestyle business, um, not necessarily a growth stuff. Yeah. Um, now, how, like, have you created a business plan? For, you said you started three businesses now. So have you had a business plan for each? Uh, business and how did you come about making that business? No. Action exceeds. So, although I said put it in your business plan, you got to at least have an idea, right? But I, I actually don't have a single written business plan. The only time I had a written business plan was for my very first one in college because we did the competitions in college and they made you write one. All the other ones I don't have anything written down. It was all a concept, an idea, and I just went and sold it. Before I even created the business, I went and sold that concept. And I had people say, you know what? I like it. I'll pay you for it. And so I'd say, okay, write me a check for five grand. And I'll go do whatever that thing we just talked about was. And after they wrote me the check, I would go to the bank and cash it to make sure it was real. And then I'd go home and say, okay, how the heck am I going to fulfill what I just sold? That's literally how <laughs> That's the truth. Right? Now, now obviously, you've got to make sure you know at least your, your limits. Don't, don't promise the world. But I, at least... I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. I went to the sales meeting with this company because I was going to like help them get more sales opportunities. But I didn't know how I was going to do it. And all I did was ask them questions. I asked them their needs. If you can ask them the company's needs, they're going to tell you all their problems. And guess what companies they're going to pay for? If you can solve their problems, they're going to pay you to do it somehow. They'll pay you to solve problems. So if you can find their problems and say, I can solve that problem, they're going to say, how much? And you're going to tell them the price, and they're either going to say, too much, or if they automatically just sign on the dotted line, you probably charge too little. <laughs> so there's a little negotiation, but then you need to collect a check, and then you walk home and you say, okay, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I just have money in my pocket and I don't know how to solve this. You go solve it. Ask your mentors, ask your professors, ask your neighbors to solve the problem, and then go do it. You might want to preface that client by saying, hey, you're my very first client, so I'm going to give you a uh, 30% off or half off or something like that because you're my very first client. So just be patient with me. This might take me longer than you would expect. Because you got to figure it out, you know? 
So I, I told my first few clients, I said, hey, I'm a young, scrappy guy, and I'm going to make it work. Trust me on that one, but it's probably going to take me a couple extra months to kind of do that. And they were cool with that. A lot of business owners are cool with investing in a young, scrappy you owner. Yeah. Okay, go along with that. You said that it's better to jump into a without having a big, huge plan. Yeah. But you do need to have some information. Like how long would you suggest that you can actually yeah. kind of let them go on ahead or more? Totally. So uh, make sure there's I know I know I'm totally out of time, guys. So if you have to leave, I, I won't be offended. Just leave your plate, your name badge on your plate. Sorry, guys. We're going over. Um, you want to know that there's a market. A market means somebody's going to buy it. There's actual people who are out there who will buy your whatever. Well, I guess one, you have to have the whatever. Then two, you have to have a market of somebody who's going to actually buy it. Um, and then you kind of have an idea of just maybe a, a gist of how you might actually do it. You don't have to have all the details worked out, but at least have the idea of, okay, if I'm going to help somebody sell their car faster, um, and I'm going to charge X dollars to do it, somebody who's going to want to be my client is somebody who has a, a, a car listing. So I'm going to call the person who has a car listing, and I'm going to sell, I'm going to sell their car faster, and uh, what do you think is a reasonable price? sell for that price. But yeah, so you want to have some of the gist of the ideas, but again, action, action, action. You will find out whether that idea is good or not by acting on it. If you just do research on it, most of the time you won't know until you actually do it. I know that's a hard concept, but yeah, Paul. Okay, so um, everybody is looking for an investor, you know, so how do you go about finding the right investor and, you know, I mean, I've, got a, I've got a great answer for you. Don't. Okay. Have you heard of bootstrap? Bootstrapping? I gotta be honest. Bootstrapping is one of the best ways to go. It is tough. Don't, it is not easy. Bootstrapping is tough. Bootstrapping. bootstrapping means you are basically running your business by your bootstrap. That means you've got no money. You've got nothing. Bootstrap. Um, now, not every business can bootstrap. If you have to build some crazy technology, you're going to have to have investors. But most businesses that people you know, here are going to start don't have to have investors. That's the easy answer. The other answer is... Do I have you're right. Know? No, you're exactly right. Okay. The three, i got to share this with you. Three Ds, three Fs. Now, don't take offense to anybody in the room. Three Ds, three Fs. Write these down. If you're looking for investors ever, the first people you want to go to... The three Ds, doctors, dentists, and dummies. <laughs> this is what I was taught. Doctors, dentists, and dummies. Because guess what? They're going to give you more money for less equity, less ownership, because they just don't know what they're doing. Friends, family, fools. <laughs> three Ds, three Fs. Okay? I know it sounds super lame, but honestly... If you are trying to raise money and you go to a venture capitalist, yes. I don't know which one we are. <laughs> and you're a, you're a plus, right? Isn't he a foot doctor? <laughs> three D's, three S, those are the first groups you go to. After that, and only after that, would you go to what's called angel investors. Angel investors are individually accredited investors that can pay you money. Uh, they've got to be accredited investors. I know that the whole 3D3S brings up legalities. I'm not an attorney. You can't sue me for what I just said. But that's where you go. Venture capitalists almost will never invest in a first-time entrepreneur. So just don't go there. Waste of time. Angel investors will probably not do it either. So that's why these 3D3Fs are the best way to go. Because they're going to look at you, and they're going to look at your heart, and they're going to look at your passion, and they're going to say... I believe in you. They don't believe in your business idea necessarily. It's because they believe in you as a person. That's why they're going to write you a check. That makes sense. They believe in you. So you better be good to people. Because it's going to come around. And I know, you know, in sales you're never supposed to assume. But I would assume that uh, networking groups is the first place to find doctors and dentists and dorks that you don't know. Yep. I know we're in an LDS community. Try not to scam your ward members. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just telling you. Why don't you be in the pool? It's hard. <laughs> you know, I don't, you know, Dave was saying. But yes, use those three. Um, 
Again, bootstrap. That's number one. Bootstrap is number one strategy. Bootstrap. Yeah. What would you say are some of the, the biggest challenges you face in starting a consulting business? Consulting business. Wow. So consulting businesses are tough because you're basically like a straight commission salesperson. That's really how you look at it. Consulting is I live and die by what I create the consultants. So if you don't have a consulting gig, you're done. And you don't have any money. So it depends on if you can become that expert. It might not be a bad idea to work as a consultant for somebody else first to understand 